Hi, Alex here from Rebeloper.com and in this episode of our Advent Calendar Tutorial Series, I am going to show you how you can add Chartboost to your apps in Swift. So, let's get started! Before we dive in, why do you need Chartboost and what is Chartboost? If you haven't heard, then you must know that Chartboost is the ad network to go when you are building games for iOS. So let's get started by opening up our project that we have left off in the uh, episode yesterday. So first of all, as usual, let us just simply commit and I will just type in for the comment here day 9 and push to remote. Remember you can download my uh, github repository from our uh, repo site. Okay, from github. And now finally we are going to create our new branch as usual. I will name this day 10. Oh, we are already at day 10. Okay, now uh, I have created here in the in the resources that you will be able to download down in the link from the description. I have created a chartboost helper .swift file that I will use to uh, easily set up chartboost because the chartboost documentation has only Objective C code. So this is how you will easily add your Swift code into your Swift SpriteKit projects. Okay, but first let's go to Chartboost. So go ahead and type in your browser Chartboost and if you haven't already done so sign up or just simply log in. And I will just log in with my test user account here and uh, this one, yes. And uh, let us just log in here. First of all, make sure that you have set up under your account or maybe manage funds. Yeah, I believe it's under account. And let's go to manage fund and set up payment details. Make sure that you have set all of this up because otherwise you don't uh, uh, have access to creating new apps. So let's go back to dashboard and then select add app here under uh, the left hand corner. Okay, select platform iOS and the nickname will be, I usually use the nickname of my project. So advent calendar tutorials will, it will be. App bundle ID, we will import our app bundle ID. Well, you will import it once your app is live on the App Store and I will show you how to import it for another project, another app for my client that I have created uh, later on in just a few minutes at the end of this episode. And of course iTunes URL, we don't have it. Uh, app orientation is portrait and we will enable test mode for uh, testing out our project and I will just set the minutes to 120. Okay, let's click on save and as you can see we have created our app ID and our app signature. Good stuff! Next up we need to create a campaign or if you have already created a campaign add this app to your campaign. For these tutorial purposes I will create my own campaign, my new campaign and it will be a publishing campaign and I will just select campaign name. Uh, ad type will be static interstitial iOS platform and here we have our app. Let's simply click on save and as you can see it is active. Now if you haven't already set up your payment details this will not be active. So go ahead and do that first if you haven't done already so. Okay, now that is all you have to do to set up an app in the Chartboost dashboard. Now let's go over to help and let's see what we need to do to uh, integrate uh, uh, 
uh, the Chartboost SDK. So first of all, the, let's download our SDK here and uh, let's choose iOS. Okay, let's wait for it and uh, let's go to how to integrate. And here we have before you begin, we have already set up our and uh, we have uh, set an active publishing campaign. Good stuff. Next up is that uh, we need to unzip the SDK package and drop the chart boost framework into our Xcode project. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, let's unzip our downloaded uh, files. And here we have our chart boost framework. So let's open up our Xcode and I would just simply drag and drop all of this framework here. Make sure copy items if needed is checked and we are adding it to the target. Good stuff. We have it here. Next up, the second one is to add StoreKit, Foundation, Core Graphics, WebKit and UIKit frameworks to our project. Okay, that is fairly simple. Let's go to our project, select our target and under general, let's just scroll down and under linked frameworks and libraries, let's click on the plus button here. And first one is the store kit. So we will just simply type here and let's just select it and add it here. Good stuff. Okay, foundation is next up and I will just add them all and fast forward it for you. Great, we have added all the frameworks. Now let us just scroll down and see what are the next steps. And here it is, add the import header to your appdelegate.m file. And as you can see, all of this example code is in Objective-C. That is because the Chartbus framework is written in Objective-C, but luckily for you, today we are going to learn how to add all of this in Swift. Okay, let's just go back to our Xcode project and let me just open up now the chartboost helper.swift file that you have downloaded. Okay, let me just drag this out here. As you can see, we have some things to consider. First of all, let us create some constants for the chartboost app ID and the chartboost app signature we have already created. So we just copy this out and uh, uh, maybe go, uh, well, let us just create a setup file here. Let's create a new file and that will be a Swift file and let us just create a new setup file. Okay, and I will just paste them here and let's collect our chart boost app ID by going to our advent calendar okay if you haven't already selected it and then go to app settings and basic settings and simply copy and paste these two elements strings and finally the app signature good stuff this is to avoid typos as you already know with me I like <laughs> uh, going ahead with these type of uh, uh, errors. Next up, we are going to use the chart boost uh, delegate, uh, but before we can do that, we need to create a bridging header. Well, I should have created the bridging header first, but since it was commented out, I omitted it. But first, so let's create our bridging header. And to do that, we need to create a new file here. Again, uh, we are going to create a header file and let's call this make sure that bridging header, it is typed exactly as you see it here. Okay, uh, maybe let's add it to targets and advent calendar tutorials. Well, you could add anything here. We will uh, or link to the info playlist file with this. So this could be anything like developer bridging header or anything else that you can think of. Make sure that the bridging header section stays the same and you don't have to add .h at the end of our uh, name. Okay, let's just create it here. 
Okay, here it is. Next up, we need to link this to our info list file. So go ahead and select your target, go to build settings, and then type in the search, make sure all and combined is selected. And inside the search, you just type in bri bridging and the Objective-C bridging header should appear and just double click to make this window pop up and just simply drag and drop it here. Okay, let me just do that again. Simply drag and drop it. And as you can see, it has been added. Go ahead and hit return or just click anywhere else. And we have our bridging header set up. Let us just uh, go inside our advent calendar tutorials bridging header and then add these four imports. So I will just copy this out and may uncomment them with command uh, slash. Okay, and as you can see, we have imported the UI kit framework, chart boost, common crypto, and add support. Good stuff. Let us just build now and see. Well, maybe some errors might occur, maybe it will succeed, but this is a good way to test if everything is in place. Okay, build has succeeded. What is up next? Of course, we need to import Chartbus Delegate because we want to find out about um, ad presentation and when a user clicks on an ad or when a user exits the ads or closes the ad. So I will just import the Chartbus Delegate. Let me just copy this out, okay? And go to our App Delegate. Okay, here we are. And here, let us just paste it in there. Okay, uh, next up, we need to set up Chart Boost. And we will copy out and paste this in the did finish launching with options function. And I will just uh, put it uh, at the beginning. This should be the first one because we need some uh, fetching from the network. And of course, we here we have our setup Chart Boost function that is still missing. And I just scroll down all over here and paste it inside our appdelegate.swift file. And as you can see, we have just simply used Chartboost app ID and Chartboost app signature, and we are starting the Chartboost. And we are caching an interstitial at our location, and it is, this is a main menu. We're going to use only one uh, presentation of an interstitial, and I just chose to be it in the main menu. Of course, you can choose otherwise. Okay. Now, here we go. We are still missing the delegate functions. So I will just copy and paste all of these uh, delegate functions after the chart boost setup. So let me go through them. Should display interstitial. This is when the this interstitial should be displayed, of course. And we are using a post of our notification center. And that is because we are uh, trying to stop the background music and start the background music. Now, why would we want to do that? That is because automatically, when a chart boost ad is presented, the background music is stopped. But we don't know if a user uh, dismiss the interstitial or close the interstitial. Anyway, when the interstitial goes away, then the background music isn't restarted again. So this is a good way to know when to restart the music. And of course, we stop the music automatically. So we, could be, we should be on the safe side. When we dismiss the interstitial, we start the background music again and with a notification, okay. Of course, and we start the game plane. And that is what I am going to talk in a little later on because we will, because of the structure of how we will um, present our interstitials. So here we have a close interstitial and a did click interstitial. Okay, uh, first of all, let us just get rid of these. Uh, errors, the start background music notification name. So we need our notification name. So inside our game view controller, we need to add these three notification names. Okay, and just copy this out and go to our 
game view controller and outside of the class I just paste all of them here let me just go back hit the command B and let's see if everything uh, worked out okay build has succeeded of course but uh, uh, Xcode should recognize them soon enough let's go back to our game view controller let's add our notification observers before uh, inside our class before uh, well let's get them after the view did load okay and we need to add our notification observers and let's add them right after the super view did load okay this is how we add uh, observers to our uh, game view controller so we may observe these posts okay and finally we need to add all of these selectors the stop background music and the start background music so let's go ahead and copy all of these two out and i will explain them in just a minute i will just go ahead and add them at the bottom of our file so we are using objective c because we are set uh, setting the selector here and of course we are checking if the get all sound state if we do have uh, set up uh, our sounds if they are on then we need to stop them and if they are uh, uh, on we need to play them if not then everything stays okay now as you can see here i need to change some things with the bd player stat because this is an old code so i would just type in act player stats dot share dot get sound that is the syntax for this one okay i will probably change this from the copied one okay now what is up next of course uh, we need to get rid of uh, oh uh, yeah we need to go inside our scene and we need to set up when the ad should be displayed and that is a, a kind of a tricky question when should we add our ads in our game well uh, when an ad is requested we fetch a request from the chart boost servers and while that could take a while one second three seconds maybe five seconds uh, we need to cache it first and that is a problem because you might end up going into the gameplay or maybe just playing a few seconds in the gameplay and getting an ad when you don't want to so my advice is to put the ad when a level is selected or when you just go and play the gameplay and that point is when we tap on the play button on the main menu scene so first of all let us just uh, select and put this start gameplay notification uh, in the did move uh, to view of our scene so let's go to our main menu and find our did move to view okay and let us just paste this here uh, good stuff now we need to add our start gameplay notification but before we do that uh, well let's go ahead and add all of these two functions so we get, may get rid of this error let's just scroll down here and add our notification start gameplay notification and that will uh, fire the start gameplay that will just simply transition and again another bd manager let me just comment this out act manager dot share dot transition from the scene self to scene dot gameplay okay uh, good stuff so we are transitioning to our gameplay when this notification is fired okay now we need to fire up um, our chart boost um, not all the time so you don't want to add 
bombard your user all of the time when they want to go to the gameplay scene or they want to just simply play the game. So I have added a chance factor here. Uh, I am choosing a random number between 1 and 10 and if the number is less than 5 then we show the app. If it is larger than 5 then we simply just hop on and start the gameplay. So when we tap on the button we need to add this logic so I'll just copy this out and go to our play button and inside our um, inside our completion handler I will just copy and paste this logic and of course I will well maybe let me just go ahead and cut this out here add this to the start gameplay okay it's much easier good stuff now of course um, maybe we need our self here because we are inside a completion handler and we don't have a random number here so I will just go ahead so now it complains that the CG float has no member random and that is because we need to create an extension here and the extension is down here and here it is how you can create a CG float random with a minimum value and a maximum value. So I would just go ahead and inside our CG float extension I would just simply paste this in. Okay, let's go back to our main menu and now it is complaining that we don't have a show ads uh, function. Okay, and I will just copy finally as a last step this out and I will just go through it for you. Let me just go. So here we are going to ask again if uh, there are no ads and I will just create this get no ads inside our ACT player stats in a moment. So we are first asking if we have an interstitial cache and if not then we are cacheing our interstitial for the next time and we are starting our gameplay. If not then we show our interstitial so we do have an interstitial and of course we again cache our interstitial for the next time. If we get if we don't the get no ads returns as false then it means that the no ads in a purchase has been purchased and you need to set this up of course again if you have at all in-app purchases in your app or if you will have. Oh, so if the no ads should be displayed then we are not showing ads at all and we are starting the gameplay. So let's go back to the ACT uh, player stats and let's just create a get no ads uh, function here. I will just copy all of this sound uh, logic here and paste it again and modify it to be used as the no ads. So first of all let's change our set sounds to set no ads and the get sound to get no ads. Good stuff. Now we need to uh, change the key so I will just again copy and paste this get a K no ads state and set the string value to K no ads state and change the keys here. Okay, good stuff. And now we are going to go back to our main menu and change this to ACT player stats dot shared dot and get no ads, but uh, let's just build this. So we may get the completion handler, uh, the autocomplete, sorry about that. And let's type in get and here we have our get no ads. So if it is false then we will just simply uh, try to show a interstitial. Good stuff here. And now let us just uh, build and run on our iPhone 10 simulator. And you might want to build several times so the chart boost servers may see that you have implemented the SDK and it may show you uh, some interstitials. Let's just 
just uh, go here and let's see uh, what happens. Maybe nothing will happen, but if you run them over and over again, then it should work. Okay, let's go back. Maybe I didn't show. Well, most probably we don't have any uh, apps uh, at Cushet. Okay, now you will have eventually some ads with this setup, believe me, okay? But maybe you need to wait a little bit. Now, once your app is live on the App Store, then you need to go back to your app settings in Chartboost and add your app bundle ID and your iTunes URL. So for my client, I already have one app on the App Store and now I want to go back to that app and set up the bundle ID. So let us just sign out here. Let's log out and show you how you can do this. Okay, let us just log in. Okay, let's select our app. Okay, and go to app setting, basic settings. And now uh, we want to add our app bundle ID. Okay, and I will just find this app bundle ID. Okay, let me just copy this out and go here. And let us just import our app. And as you can see, it has found the app on the App Store and we chose it. And finally, let us just scroll down and save it. As you can see, test mode has been disabled by default. Okay, that is it for how to add Chartboost to your apps. And I will see you in the next one. If you did like our videos, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, go ahead and share it with your friends and subscribe by clicking or tapping down below to the subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one.